I've been using Apple Watches since the Series Zero and I've upgraded basically every year, but this year I'm returning mine. In this honest long-term review, I'll not only tell you exactly why, but also why the Series 6 is by far the best Apple Watch yet and why if you can afford it, you should absolutely buy one over the SE or a discounted Series 5. The Apple Watch has been shockingly successful and I see them everywhere. When I ask people about them, they always say that they love their Apple Watch. The Series 3 is still being sold and bought like crazy, so how can Apple get people to spend more money on a Series 6 instead of one of the less expensive ones? Basically, it's incremental new features and little exclusives that force people to spend more, and by the looks of it, it's working. This year, we have a few new colors which are really cool, mine is the product red, and we have the new blood oxygen sensor and the always on altimeter. Of course, we still have the ECG support and probably the biggest one is the always on display. If you need those sensors for health reasons, the Series 6 is absolutely worth it. But I feel like most people don't and they buy the top model for just one or two reasons. After using the S6 for a while now, I think that most people should buy one, not because of the few incremental improvements improvements like the maybe brighter display, but for the real world differences that Apple didn't advertise. The Series 6 has killer battery life, way better than before, and I don't know why Apple is not making a big deal about it. On top of that, after two generations, we have an actually new processor that not only allows for this battery life improvement, but super smooth, perfect performance. Now, most people don't care about an occasional stutter with a cheaper watch, but as I was brainstorming and going over comments and contemplating returning mine, something became really clear to me. Most people make buying decisions based on today and not how they will use the product a few years from now. And with Apple Watches, people are keeping them much longer than their phones. I'm seeing tons of people keeping them for three, four, and even five years. When you start looking at it from that perspective, the extra 50 to $100 more from a discounted Series 5 or even $120 more over an SE starts to make a lot more sense. Forget the extra sensors or the cooler colors or even the always on display. The Series 6 is going to be a supported and smooth running watch five years from now. And that's something that I can't say for my Series 5 or the SE, which already have some occasional slowdowns. On top of that, we have some features that almost nobody is talking about and that Apple didn't really mention that make it a nicer device. First off, that U1 chip that only the S6 has. We still know very little about it, but based on leaks, it will allow the Apple Watch to not only be very accurately found and maybe find other devices, but support for authentication and for accurate secure unlocking. Right now, you can unlock your Mac with your watch, but the U1 will be much more secure, allowing you to unlock your house or even your car quicker and way more securely. Every new Apple device is now getting this U1 chip, so having this in your watch means that you'll be good even years from now. This might seem minor, but notifications are so much nicer and more pronounced than with the older Apple watches. It's still silent, but the vibrations feel twice as strong, and I've definitely appreciated that, especially when using it as a silent alarm to wake up in the morning. The brighter display in the always on mode, when it is dimmed and when you're outside can be nice as well. I'm saying it this way so you won't don't get confused. Now, when Apple said the display can be two and a half times brighter, many people didn't understand completely what they meant. Even we didn't when we first tested it. The display brightness is identical to the Series 5 in most scenarios. My biggest complaint with the Series 5 is how much that screen dims in its always on mode, and I wish Apple would let us choose to keep it brighter, but sacrifice battery life. At the same time, I do understand why they don't, because with the S5, I end most of my days with about 10% of battery life remaining. Now, despite the larger battery in the Series 6, Apple still doesn't let you customize it, and in normal lighting, it's exactly the same. Now let's talk about the most impressive part that Apple won't even admit to, and that's the battery life. It's still rated at 18 hours like my Series 5 was, but there is a world of a difference. Instead of ending with 10% at the end of the night, I now get 35 to 40%, and other people have commented that at the end of the day, they have 50% remaining. Now let me tell you why having that extra 30 to 40% of battery life can make a world of a difference to many of you, and how some of you guys could get double the battery life compared to an SE. Even though I end my day with 10% battery, other than having the display at its brightest settings, I'm not somebody that pushes my Apple Watch very hard. 
I do exercise, but it's usually not long and it's usually indoors. The times that I have, for example, went hiking, my Apple Watch ends up dying before the end of the day and a few times before I was even done with my workout. If I don't take my charger, I'm without notifications or tracking for the rest of the day. With the Series 6, this will be much less of an issue, and not only that, it charges 20% faster as well. Another benefit is for sleep tracking, which just came out with watchOS 7. With my Series 5, I have to place it on a charger about an hour before bed, and then once again in the morning, or else it will die a few hours into the night. With the Series 6, you could charge it once in the evening, or maybe instead in the morning when you get up and you're ready for the day. And that's with the always on display mode enabled. Now, if you're somebody considering between buying an SE that doesn't have always on or spending more money on the Series 6, if you turn off the power draining always on display mode on the S6, your battery life will skyrocket. I've seen people get over two days of use and that's with sleep tracking and with workouts, which no other Apple Watch can do. Now that is thanks to the faster, more power efficient processor, the larger battery, and the lack of 3D touch hardware. If you don't need fantastic battery life, keep in mind that as time goes on, the battery will degrade. And I saw one guy who upgraded to a Series 6 just because his two-year-old Series 4's battery no longer lasts throughout the day. Now with the 6, the extra battery life will really come in handy three years from now. Now let's get into the disappointments and why even though the Series 6 is so nice, why I'm returning it. I already told you guys about the always on display that still dims way too much for my liking. And even though the battery life is so good, they still don't allow you to set it brighter. To me, this was the biggest excitement with the Series 6. And if it was two and a half times brighter in normal lighting conditions, and that's where I use my watch 90% of the time, I would still be keeping it. Right now, I still have to raise my wrist to clearly see my complications. The second disappointment is that the oxygen sensor is super sensitive. Half the time, it doesn't end up working, so I have to redo it. And typically, my levels are fine anyways, so I'm not ever using it. Now, I do hope that this could be improved with software for those that do need it consistently. The last thing is pretty minor, but it's that the Product Red Sport Band doesn't actually match the watch at all. And some people were actually commenting and thinking that Apple sent me the wrong watch band and they didn't. This is the right one. Last year, I solely upgraded for the always on display. And this year, even though the upgrade is much more substantial, for my use case, charging every night, it works fine. And I'm no longer using the sleep tracking feature. If I use that, or if I was a lot more active outdoors, or if I knew that I was gonna keep the watch for three to five years and that extra battery life would be really helpful, then it would be worth upgrading. But because of this channel, I'm almost certain that I'm gonna be upgrading next year. So I'm not too worried about battery degradation. And even though I love the better vibrations, that alone isn't worth spending more money. With all of that said, if you're considering buying a Series 6 and you can afford the extra price over an SE or a discounted Series 5, I would absolutely advise you to buy the Series 6. It's an excellent watch and you're gonna be happy with it for many, many years. Make sure to check out the links in the description below for discounted Apple Watches and also the merch shelf where you guys can find super comfy premium shirts like this one, hoodies, and even masks, which support our efforts here on YouTube. If you wanna see my direct detail comparison against the Series 5 or Vadim's excellent review of the Apple Watch SE with Apple's master plan, those videos are right over there. And go ahead and click above to subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this one. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.